Oh, you got me. Pumpkin, where are we going? All right. I'm following you. You take the lead, Pumpkin. You don't want to say hi? That's fine. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm uh, great. Lots of stuff going on over here on the table I need to handle. Pool's all lit up with the fountain out there in the middle, giving off that nice, like, putt-putt course vibe. Things are great outside. And everything's sopping wet, which is great. We've needed rain, like, very very badly needed some rain that's supposed to keep doing this for several more days so the outdoor video is probably going to be on pause for a while and that's okay i'll take it because what's the point of spring without any rain everything's so brown and icky outside that's not that's not how it's supposed to be things are supposed to be lush and green and the trees i don't know if you'll be able to see over here like see how the trees are starting to finally start to plump up and push out their little seeds. And they're a little bit behind because they haven't had much rain. Nice warm weather we've been having is also going away. So I need to bring these in. I think everything else out here should be okay. I say the coolest temperature that I saw in the forecast was like 30. It's supposed to be in the 50s and then bounce down into the 30s. And that's totally normal for this time of year. So I don't think like the queen palm should be, I brought the queen palm out. There it is. And all of its glory from having to have had its fronds cut to fit into the garage over there it did okay a couple fronds browned up when we had that situation where it got really cold and then it warmed up and then the thermostat and the heaters wasn't working and it kept it was like bouncing between 40 degrees in there and 95 94 i think is the highest it um, didn't really appreciate that a lot of the plants did that was a little bit too much fluctuation but it's a queen palm it'll be fine i do need to stay focused here because i've been paranoid for the last couple of days that i was going to forget to bring in these new plants that were in that haul video from a few days ago and well, that would really suck. I don't want these plants to die. The two crotons, couple brugmansias, the aphalandra, and the acalpha that was sent as a for free gift. In this, I've really been enjoying this arrangement through the window in the house because, like I said, it's been raining. Things are a mess out here. That's what it's going to be for a while. It's a, a, a long story. Hopefully, we'll make sense here in several weeks. Good things. Lots of good things that are going to be happening out here. Here you are. I got you, Pugian. Finally caught up with you. I know you don't... I've been keeping my camera over here near her food when she eats in the morning, hoping that that's going to stop her from this fun habit she's developed within the last few months of seeing the camera and being like, nah, I'm going to leave now. If you've been on the channel for a few years, you know, like, this cat used to, like, you'd turn the camera on and she would be like, oh, I'm ready for my close-up. I think it's the new lens. Maybe it's too big, like, she can see into the soul of the camera. Is that what it is, Pumpkin? Can you see into the soul of the camera? Is that what's going on? Or she started to associate me taking out the camera with playtime and me throwing cookies across the floor. That probably has a lot to do with it. That's why she's always taken off because she's waiting for treats. If you haven't picked up on it yet, there's no plan for this vlog or any direction. I have no idea what's going to happen over the next who knows how long this is going to be. Maybe 20 or 30 minutes? I don't know. Did have some exciting development happen out here. I mean, I think it's exciting, like a big part of the year. Fresh mulch. The pedicets are starting to pop their little flower heads up too. I'm really happy that when they put the mulch down, they didn't smother those. I usually do all of my mulching myself, but someone knocked on the door and they'd said they'd do the front and the back. They'd do a nice layer. There's triple blended composted mulch. Anyways, they said they'd do the front and the backyard for 200 bucks. And I was like, okay, yes, please go ahead. And they like weeded the beds and edged them. I was like, oh my gosh, you guys, like my favorite people in the whole world right now. It sounds like a lot of money, but when you factor in that I usually do it myself and if I can't get the mulch delivered, then I have to get it in bags. Plus the time it takes multiple trips back and forth to the stores. It usually costs me more than that to do it myself. A lot of time, although I do always enjoy the workout. So that's okay. There's plenty of stuff to do out here to get exercise. You could just exercise. That's always an option too. Wow. Oh, the sky looks really pretty right now. It's good to see clouds. It's been so sunny, which is great. Love the sun. Haven't really seen much prettiness in the sky in a while. Wind just keeps blowing this one over. I think, I don't think, I know. I definitely need to repot this this year. Look at like how narrow the gap is between the trunk and the edge of that pot. It's pretty narrow. I probably want to bump this up to like a 20 gallon somewhere in there. You know, they're palms. They can stay in the same pot for a long time. But the longer they stay in the same pot, the more and more and more you have to really stay on top of making sure that they're fed really well because you're essentially growing them hydroponically if you don't have much soil in the pot and it's all just roots. So that's something to keep in mind just for peace of mind. I think it'd be easier to get it repotted. This is in here because it kept blowing the palm tree over. It didn't really solve that problem. It's fine. Buddy, 
You wanna come in? Buddy, no, he's looking for frogs. There's no frogs. It's too cold, they're not out yet, buddy. And if they were, I wouldn't just stand here and let you hunt them. He has, he's bad with frogs. What's he doing out there, Pumpkin? The dog, Buddy, my sister's dog, who's staying here temporarily, is just out there just barking at absolutely nothing. This is an unexpected change. I was just saying the previous clip, prior to the prior clip, last night that it was supposed to be all rainy and everything. And I wouldn't have started the vlog last night if I had thought there was going to be sunshine. According to the apps on my phone, it's cloudy and raining right now. I'd say they kind of messed that one up. It does still look like it's going to rain a lot over the next several days, so I should seize the opportunity to get some things done. I got some new, look at, aren't they beautiful? I sprayed those on with a water repellent. So they're gonna sit out here and dry off for a little while. This was in the last video. I have some bulbs that need to be planted. I think I mentioned in my last video that it looked like that Arctic whatever that was that happened down here pretty much took out all the bulbs that I had potted up. Everything turned to mush that was in pots. They were just up and exposed and that was just too much cold for them. But I was able to get a hold of some force bulbs, some more force bulbs. These are the, uh, well it says on here, they're the double eight mix force, right? Yeah, double eight mix. A taller tulip that have like a nice white, purpley and pink flowers in their mix and then these are part of the shadows by the way it's just really the sun's really harsh today there are 10 cotton candy hyacinth bulbs in here it's not a lot as far as bulbs go you know, typically when i plant bulbs i'll be planting them in the hundreds but this is what i was able to get a hold of enforced bulbs tend to be more expensive i figured this is okay at least this way i can put together you know a couple pots with some tulips and some hyacinths in there that'll help add some color these things are still a little bleak <laughs> you know because it's that time of year waiting for things to get going. I'm gonna go hunting around for a plastic pot to put these in. Wanna find a pot that I can fit into a decorative pot because it, well, you'll see. I'll explain it in a second. I figure I should be able to fit all of these into these three pots here. Like I said, 45 tulip bulbs really actually isn't all that much. You can see I have the soil down fairly far in here, or hopefully you can see. Lighting's kind of weird today. It isn't down as far as I would do for bulbs in the ground. When bulbs are forced, pre-chilled, essentially I tend to not plant them as deep when they're in containers. I've just noticed that for whatever reason, maybe it's just bad luck, that's probably, okay, that was a loud dump truck or whatever that was. The joys of filming outside. Anyways, perhaps it's just bad luck. Been a lot of occasions when I've been planting force bulbs where they tend to seem to rot a little bit more easily. Like I said though, that could just be dumb luck. I don't know. But what I've noticed is that when I plant force bulbs up just a little bit higher, this is still pretty deep. It's probably a good five inches. Typically with tulips, I like to go six to eight inches. Like I said, I've had some rough luck doing it that way. All anecdotal, just probably a coincidence. I could probably actually put a few more in here if I really want this to be like a tight, impressive display. I think I'm going to keep it like this though because I want to keep these bulbs. I'm not going to treat them as annuals. That's why I'm planting them up in nursery containers. It's not as cute, but I can just take these and set them in my decorative pots, let them do their thing. And then when it's time to move the tropicals out and more warm loving annuals, I can just lift these and move them to the side and let them do their bulb thing that they need to do so that they can be replanted in the fall and have some vigor to them. That's especially important because these are the late mix, meaning these aren't going to come up for probably at least another three and a half to four weeks. I would expect these to be blooming maybe uh, mid to late April, even into May. It's going to depend on the weather somewhat and the quality of the bulbs. Sometimes pre-chilled force bulbs they can be hit or miss. And a lot of that does depend on where you're getting the bulbs from. I just had to get up on Amazon because most of the bulb companies were totally sold out of everything, particularly things that have been pre-chilled and forced. It's when I'm going through places like Amazon and Etsy and, and they're from places where I don't really recognize the name. That's when I'm like, eh, all right. You say it's pre-chilled, I'm just gonna have to trust you. That's another reason that I like to put them in these nursery containers, because that way if they turn out to be duds, I haven't wasted a nice pot and I won't have to dig the whole thing out with this. It's just easier to lift it, discard it, put it into a compost, something like that. I got 10 squeezed into here. I could probably put a couple more in there. No, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna drop a couple more in. Got a squishy one here. So with the squishy ones, I'm not going to put that down in there. You can see that the growth that's coming out, it's kind of yellow. 
falling off. I think that this got cut when it was dug up. I'm gonna save it though. I'm not gonna throw it out. I'll let this sit out and dry for a few days. Some of them have some wrinkles on them. They're starting to desiccate. So really it's beyond time. They probably should have been planted a few weeks ago, but why well, didn't I didn't have them a few weeks ago. So that wouldn't really have even been an option. Oh, nice. You know, you've got great soil when it's full of chunks. Okay, that's good. So two of the tulips are done. I think I'm going to put all of the hyacinths into one pot. I'm really going to pack them in tight. Just because that's the way I like have it. Okay. One of these things is not like the other. Five of the bulbs are purple. Some of them are white, which is nifty because this is a blend. I mean, everything I'm doing here is a blend. But with the hyacinths, since I can tell them apart, that I know that one of these is white and one is pink, I don't know which is which, that does help a lot with getting things mixed up. I think that's good. That's a pretty tight grouping of hyacinths. You know what I didn't do though? I need to double check the size on these because if they're, some of those hyacinths have really big blooms, that's obviously not gonna work here. I need to, didn't do my research, pull my phone out. Okay, came to my senses and went ahead and separated those into two. I really like the way bulbs look when they're grouped together really tightly, but there just isn't a point in that if they're going to be so compacted that the flowers are just smushed together. I want to be able to see them, right? So I don't want them all squished. I did go over to the tulips and I pulled the soil back and I pushed them down just a smidge further. So the general rule of thumb with tulips is that you want them to be roughly three times the size of the bulb down into the soil. I feel like that was the worst way to explain it. Whatever the height of the bulb is, want them to be planted at a depth that's three times that height. Typically six to nine inches, somewhere in there is usually good. If you go too much more shallow than that, then it can have some issues with the bulbs flopping. I really don't want to be out here in like a month and a half or so and have it, I don't want to be staking all of those bulbs up. This wouldn't look that attractive. Spring here and most places it's really breezy so if they aren't planted deep enough not only could they just flop on their own but if it's going to be really breezy that's going to knock them around some too. And this is a fresh potting mix. I didn't add, if you may have noticed, I usually add compost and like worm castings and things to my potting mixes. I don't do that with bulbs because that can lead to them rotting essentially. It doesn't hurt to add a bulb fertilizer around the bulbs right underneath them where you put them into the pot. I just, I don't have any. So that can still be applied, but I'm going to wait until after they're done blooming. Once everything over here has, I would say at least two to three sets of leaves on them with the tulips that is once they look like they're actually nice vigorous plants i can go through and work some compost and amend the soil some to help enrich it the main thing is just that once they're budding and starting to bloom then i don't do any fertilizing nothing like that i can interfere with the quality of the flower sometimes it can even shock the bulb and cause the blooms to just fall out and don't even get them so i've got my hyacinths in here and i still have enough tulips to do I would say two more of these eight to 10 inch containers. I think I'm going to do that. I was debating holding on to a bunch of these bulbs right here to put into vases in the house and force them in the windowsill. It's always beautiful. I love seeing bulbs forced in a vase. However, these are a late mix tulip, meaning that they may not be doing anything until potentially mid-May. I think I said mid-April earlier. I meant to say mid-May. I would think that within anywhere from four to eight weeks of these being planted, they should be blooming, but just because they're pre-chilled and forced, I don't fully know. It's a little bit more unpredictable. And the late mix, the double late, tends to get pretty tall. I don't really have any forcing vases that are, I think would accommodate that. I'll go ahead and pot those up just like I did the others. Assuming I have a potting soil, I don't think I do. Again, that's why I put these into different types of containers that I can lift out of the nice ceramic planters because odds are mid to late May, I'm going to want to be planting out summer annuals in the containers that these are in. So hopefully they will have bloomed by then. The hyacinths for sure will. The tulips, I don't know, we'll see. Now I'm going to go dig around and see if I have enough potting soil to even do two more of these. I don't think I do, that could be a problem. I didn't have enough potting mix here, so some of these are a little bit low, particularly this one. The bulbs are still down beneath the soil, so that's good. The main thing is that before they actually start to emerge, I need to go ahead and get more uh, potting mix in here. Not the end of the world, I was actually pretty pleased that I had enough to even get six of these containers done. I had thought about layering the hyacinth bulbs up with the tulips, but since they're the late tulips, it just doesn't really make any sense because those hyacinths, these are the hyacinths right here, these two pots. Once they get going, they're going to want more water than the bulbs that are just sitting and chilling and not doing anything. So the hyacinths will probably be blooming, I would say within a few weeks. And these, 
maybe six to eight weeks. I don't know. It wasn't until after I ordered the bulbs I realized that my logic was somewhat flawed when I placed this order. There wasn't anything to choose from though. Like this was it. This was all I could find as far as bulbs that had been chilled and were ready to go. So it just, you know, was what it was. And I was like, that's fine, it'll do. But what I had originally planned was to have uh, tulips and hyacinths and I had some uh, daffodils and some other things that would be in bloom around the same time. That's not really going to happen here. But that's okay. That's just going to prolong the beauty and the joy of the flowers. The double eight tulips are really pretty. They have like a peony like flower on them, the double flowered. That and they're pretty tall, which is a good reason to make sure that they do get planted deep enough. This should be okay. I'm gonna go ahead and give these a very light watering, just enough to moisten the soil. It doesn't need to be flushing through or anything like that. I'm not trying to rot these out. That'll help activate them, get them going. Hopefully in a few weeks we'll be seeing some more spring color. Not right here. This That's not where these are staying. I have pots like this around my entryways and around the gates and those areas and I'll be setting these down inside of those while they're blooming. I'll pull them out when they're done and replace them with summer annuals and perennials and just you know all the fun stuff and when these start to put up and have some growth on them i will probably come in i don't know about probably if i still have any of the lobularia and pansies the things that i have over here if i have those left i may start tucking them in i don't want to do that right now because all of these are going to want a lot more water than what's necessary for the, the bulbs will just rot if i put these on top of them so that would look pretty and it would give more of an instant gratification to everything i think that would be best to just Maybe not. I'm going to just have to control myself. I have a couple other planters I want to put these in, but as I just mentioned, I just used up all my potting soil. So I don't really know what to do now. Everything I had planned for the video was reliant on the, again, poor planning on my part. My bad. Good thing I have some soil here to plant some seeds. I almost completely forgot I need to get these artichokes planted. I went ahead, got this flat here filled up with some pre-moistened seed starting mix that came with a kit that I got from Gardner's, you see it right here, Gardner's Supply. By pre-moistened, I mean I accidentally left the bag out last night and it got rained on, so that part was already done for me. That's nice. Yes, my handwriting, terrible. I'm aware, I tried my best. Leave me alone, it's fine. I know it's a lot of artichokes. I probably won't be keeping all of these. I wanted to get a really big variety because the only ones that I have tried reliably here was the Green Globe Colorado Star and it was either Tavor Imperial Star. I can't even remember because it's been a few years. When you live north of zone seven, getting them to fruit their first year can be more difficult. In fact, it even says on the back of the seed packet here, don't know how well I'll be able to see that, but it does suggest that you get a cold treatment done before they're transplanted about 10 days or so between 45 and 50 degrees. So that means that these should have been started a pretty decent amount of time ago and I should be bringing them outside right now for them to get that cold treatment. Having that cold spell once they've already started going is supposed to help them fruit their first year. I've had the green globe. I know for sure I've gotten to fruit the first year without doing that. And these other varieties here, the Imperial Star, Tavor, and, uh, or Tavor, I don't know how you're supposed to say it, and the Colorado Star, those are all supposed to be really nice improved varieties that are good for growing north of zone seven and will potentially put out fruit their first year. So that's why these are the ones that I've chosen. I grow artichokes more for their foliage, for the form of the plant. I don't personally care for the taste of artichoke. I know some people love it. I don't know, it's just not for me, but I think that they're cute. They look nice. Even harvesting them is kind of a process that I'm not fully familiar with. But if I do end up getting a good amount of fruit out of them, which I doubt will happen this year, but if I do, then I will look into harvesting them properly and giving them away to people who will eat them. Always good to try our best to not be wasteful. The seeds, oh, I don't even have enough seeds to fill these up. I didn't think about that. Yeah, that's all I have. And if I'm gonna put two or three of them in each one of the cells, and that's not going to cut it, but that's okay. I can just do like one or two. So instead of them getting three per cell, they'll just get two. That's all right. I'm gonna lightly cover those up. They only need to go down a quarter of an inch. It's pretty windy, so the soil's already kind of dried out more than I would prefer, but that's okay. They're gonna get sprayed down here pretty soon anyways. I'll go ahead, pop the rest of these in here, try and do a two to three of them per cell, something like that. Usually a couple extras in the mix, it happens. Make sure to moisten the top of the soil again since that's already dried out quite a bit just from being out here with the gentle breeze we've been having. And then lastly, I'm just gonna sprinkle a light layer of vermiculite on top. It's gonna help keep too much nastiness from developing on the surface of the soil and it'll help hold some moisture. And this is kind of heavy. I just sort of assumed that I could scoop it around gently. That's always a risky thing to do with seeds, right? You don't want to have to swipe after they've already been put into the mix because then you can end up disturbing the seeds and 
moving them around into the wrong cells. I've made that mistake plenty of times. I forgot to pre-moisten the vermiculite, so I'm going to go ahead and give that a little bit of a miss too. And that's it. That's going to do. I need to put the dome on top. If you were wondering, this is the Growies kit from Gardener's Supply. They have really nice, thick, sturdy trays that can be reused. You can even put them in the dishwasher. Honestly, that was the biggest selling point for me. It was mostly just that these are sturdy, easy to reuse, and therefore, hopefully, pretty easy to clean. Once the seeds get going, they'll go on top of this wicking mat. You take this little left, fold it down and keep water in here and that will help keep things hydrated. I don't need to do that yet. To get them going, I'm gonna keep that dome on there. I'll pull this out too, so that that's flushed down inside there. Once they start to sprout and I see, I'd say at least 70% germination in here, if not more, with about one to two leaves, just, you know, enough. I'll pull that dome off and start growing them off like you would any other seed. I will say the only critique I have for the Growies kit is that it would be really nice for this to just be a smidge taller. These domes don't form the tightest seal. You can see they're kind of loose, and that's not just because of the tags. I can take that out and it will still do that. So that's something to keep in mind if you're using these. I do like a dome that has a good snap and almost a click onto the pack, but this is okay. Just have to make sure it stays out of the way of the cats or any strong breezes. In my grow space, I have circulation fans. That's where this is going to sit until everything's starting to come up. And I may have to put some sort of tape or maybe a little weight on top to hold that down so I don't have to worry about my circulation fans blowing that right off the top. Because as we know with seeds, it's really important to make sure that that moisture stays nice and consistent and to get them going that way. These don't need light to germinate, so I'm just going to put them someplace around 70 to 75 degrees. And once they start to sprout, then I'll make sure to get a light on top of them. And once I see probably two sets of mature leaves on these, I'll thin them out. I could probably do it at one set of mature leaves. I'm always really hesitant with doing that, and it's, which is silly because it doesn't hurt the plants, but that's when I'll thin them out and then I'll wait for them to put on another set after they've been thinned and brought down. And then I'll bring them outside to get them hardened off. Like I said, it's pretty late to be doing this, at least if I'm hoping to get fruit out of them this year. I would like to just because they're really cute. If they don't, that's okay. Artichokes have really pretty form. They look great in the garden. And I have friends who love artichokes, so I'm not keeping all of these. I'll probably keep one or two of each and just sort of trial them out and see which ones I like the best. In the winter time, I will cut them back to just having a little bit of growth, just a smidge sticking up above the soil and mulch them very heavily. I'm in 6B, these are in zone seven, so they're going to need to be protected really well to get them through that first winter, if they'll even get through the first winter. Sometimes just grow them as annuals and that's okay. You get to enjoy them that way but ideally to get some nice, really good growth on them and some fruit. And that's something I have to wait for next year, more than likely. They tend to look their best the second year. That's just been my experience. A lot of the varieties I planted, really all the varieties I planted, were bred to be able to produce and look nice the first year. So we'll see what happens. Wow, it very much looks like I have this table set up as if I'm affiliated with either of these companies. I'm not. No affiliation, partnership, nothing with the Spoma or Gardener Supply. I just happen to really like this tray. It's a nice one. It's nice and sturdy. If I were really big on seed starting, which I'm not, I've talked about that before. I tend to be someone who prefers a uh, scatter. I like to scatter my seeds. I don't like the tray method. That's mostly just because I tend to get really anxious with seeds. You know, if you miss a watering, they fall over it and you can lose them. You slightly overwater and they can start dampening off. They can start dampening off for a lot of reasons. They just require a lot of TLC and I'd rather not. I got a lot of other things to take care of. My point though was that if I were to be starting lots and lots and lots of seeds inside, I don't know if I would use this. It's because they're kind of pricey. I tend to go for just like the Jiffy packs that they have at Walmart and Lowe's and Home Depot at the big box stores. And oftentimes those kits also come with a capillary mat to help keep them watered. The cells are slightly smaller, so that's better for something that I'd be planting like tons and tons of. Since I'm not doing a ton with seeds these days, I figure, okay, I'll just go ahead and get two of these this year. And then I don't have to uh, dispose of the more inexpensive ones that tend to fall apart after a couple years. I usually can get two to three years, even out of like the cheapest, cheapest kits. But after that, they start to fall apart. So this way it's hopefully just less going out into the landfills. And since I'm not doing a ton, it's practical, right? But like I said, if I are doing a lot of seeds, I don't know if I would do it this way because it would cost an absolute fortune. That's part of the thing with seeds, right? We like to grow them because there's a better selection and they're more affordable. And there's something really fun about starting something from seed and taking that all the way up to maturity. It is really fun and rewarding. I love that aspect of seeds. It's just that I know myself and I know my habits and don't be shocked if nothing happens with these because it only takes one day to forget about them. And I'm not saying I'm a forgetful person. 
I just don't like things that need to be uh, catered to frequently. You know what I'm saying? I'll do my best to make sure that these get taken care of and they don't dry out or any of those things, but we will see. I'm human and seed starting indoors, not my thing. I screw it up all the time when I start them inside. It's not uncommon at all for me to totally forget that something needs to be watered with the seeds. You know, with your house plants, you can go a couple days. They'll usually be okay depending on the plant. With seeds, you gotta watch them. Can't travel, can't do anything like that unless you have a seed watcher, someone around to take care of your seeds for you. Not that I'm doing any traveling right now, but still, you get my point. I think that's gonna do it. Clouds are starting to roll in, the sky is looking ominous, don't know what's gonna happen. Want my electronics out here, then the soil that's in a paper bag and the vermiculite. I think I should focus on getting these things taken inside. I'm happy with what I got done though, because I wasn't expecting to really be able to get anything done outside this week other than what was in Monday and Wednesday's video. But for the vlog, I didn't think I was gonna be able to do anything and I have a lot that needs to get done like this and then getting those bulbs planted. So I'm happy about all of that. I still need to go through and start doing prunes on the hydrangea trees and well really any of the flowering shrubs and trees once they start to plump up and the buds start to come out, it's time to give them a cut. So that's something I need to get done. I need to trim those hydrangea trees and some other things back, but I'm waiting for my new pruners to come in the mail. So those should be here soon and start to do a lot of pruning and other things and start amending the garden beds out here and then a bunch of, there's a lot of other things that are coming up, hopefully. Some things are in the works, have some details to work out. But this is all good, getting spring kicked off. Y'all starting seeds, what are you starting? You have any tips, tricks, suggestions? Put them down there in the comments. I love talking to everybody. It's a great place for people to communicate and learn some new things. It's impossible for me to remember to talk about everything in a video. And in these Saturday videos, they're, <laughs> as you can see, tend to be pretty casual and I don't focus as much on relaying the information as well as I probably should. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. Oh, the Gerber daisies. Absolutely love them, so pretty, so cute. Of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye, bye.